Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. It's been a bit since I've uploaded a video. It's been a couple weeks since I've filmed a video. If you can hear me, I'm sick. Uh, I tried to wait and wait and wait to film this video until I felt better because mostly I'm so congested and like coffee that it would just not be a pleasant video for you guys to watch. But I leave tomorrow for Overland Expo. So today's the last day I can film a video and upload it and I'm kind of overdue. So this is a video I've been talking about making for a little while. It's like travel kit, my main travel kit. So I'm gonna talk about like the main bags that I use for travel, uh, a lot of pieces of gear that I'll use in one of these bags. Uh, this just like kind of generally good gear. Like it's not gonna be that much gear either. You think I'm a gear guy, I'm just gonna like overload you with gear. Not that much, not that much stuff. So, yeah, a little bit of backstory, I guess, as I do in the videos. Uh, I am currently basically a full-time YouTuber. Historically, I was a web developer, a back-end programmer. So historically, I had always carried around a laptop bag. I have a lot of bag videos. This is the Vertex Gamut. It's been my go-to bag for a very long time when I was a developer carrying a backpack and a laptop and associated gear all the time. I don't do that anymore. Now I've just run a holster company and run this YouTube channel and then do, you know, little little photo gigs or some marketing stuff here and there. So I'm, my job's kind of weird now uh, and I don't go to an office anymore. I work from home, but I do travel a lot. So I travel on airplanes or I travel in my vehicle. I take a lot of trips. Like I primarily do a lot of vehicle adventure overland type videos so I take a lot of trips I go to various expos and stuff like that so I travel probably more than I used to but I used to travel travel to work basically every day carrying a backpack so now my my gear has evolved a little bit but if you're kind of wondering what more is like oh I wonder what Mike's kind of like everyday bag is I'll link to a video or two or a couple up here, but you could just search probably like LLOD EDC bag. And that'll really have bag stuff if you're looking for that. So some of that stuff has kind of evolved into what you're gonna see today as my general travel kit. Um, so I'm gonna talk about almost everything I'm gonna talk about right now you can take on a plane. Having said that, I carry a gun every day when I'm not flying. Uh, so, and then I carry my EDC every day, which is comprised of a knife and or uh, a multi-tool, the Leatherman Skeletal. tool. So if you just want to see my EDC, I'll link to an e my most recent EDC video up there. So that's what I carry every day. It consists of uh, either a Glock 43X or a Glock 19, a Leatherman Skeletal, tool, uh, a flashlight of some sort, either a Streamlight typically or an Olight Warrior mini is kind of my go-to carry wallet keys belt i carry a edc hybrid belt that i sell on my website and i almost almost always pretty much every day wear vertex delta stretch pants still my definite go-to pants of all time so i'll link to all that stuff down below but that's my edc so when i travel i'm wearing my same edc but maybe not the gun and maybe not the skeletal tool if I'm flying. Now I don't like to check a bag. If I'm going somewhere for a while, I'll check a bag and maybe I'll check a gun depending on the, the state's laws, reciprocity, concealed carry, whether I'm traveling to a training event and I'm taking like an AR with me or something. So that all kind of fluctuates. But what I'm talking about now is pretty much just carry on gear and the gear that I take in my truck when I go places. Now a little bit more backstory, I have a lot of vehicles, they're all heavily kitted out with gear. I like to keep gear, I like to keep as much gear as I reasonably can in my rigs to get me out of whatever situation I need to get out of or to help anybody else that I could potentially help. So my trucks are also loaded with gear as well. Those are separate, I'll try to link to some up here, but I need to do some updated truck gear videos as well. So. Chances are if you're like, Mike, I really thought you would have carried this. Well, if it's probably like more trunk, truck centric or vehicle centric, then I probably always do keep that in my truck. If it's EDC stuff, I probably already carry that on my body. Whew, out of the way. Sorry, my brain's probably a little foggy too because 
I'm sick. And I've been doing crazy, crazy, crazy prep for Overland Expo. And also I lifted my Sequoia and been doing stuff to that and just stuff around the house. I've kind of started having to do a bunch of excavation on my house because hopefully foundations and forms and stuff are going in next week. I'll give you guys updates on that. Sorry, a little bit more rambling than I thought I would have done at this point in the video. But one more ramble real quick. Overland Expo is this weekend. I'm planning on uploading this video before the weekend. So this weekend, May like 19th, I think, 19th to 21st, Overland Expo West in Flagstaff, Arizona. I will be there at 11 a.m. every day. I'll be at KC Highlights booth if you want to come and say hi to me. At 1 p.m. every day, I will be at Diamondback Covers booth with my Tundra. I'll have the Tacoma and KC Highlights booth. And then Friday and Saturday at 3 p.m., I'm going to hang out with some Fieldcraft guys and my friends from Vertex in the Fieldcraft Survival booth. So if any of those times work for you, if you're in the area and you want to come say hey, come say hey, sweet. Let's get into some gear. So I'm going to start off the video by covering a bunch of gear, but uh, spoiler alert, I'll talk about it more later. You've seen it in a lot of my videos probably because I just genuinely use it all the time. This is a Vertex contingency duffel. This is a 45 liter duffel. This is a carry-on size duffel. Easily is carry-onable to any carry-on travel thing. Fits in the overhead bins. The thing I like about this duffel bag is if you're on one of those small airplanes where they won't let you take like a hard-sided carry-on and they make you check it, I hate that, even when you gate check it, they'll always, I have never been told I cannot bring this on a plane. When I've run out of overhead bins, they have let me just put this under my feet, basically. So I carry a lot of stuff with me. Some of that stuff's valuable, some of that stuff's fragile. And this is my go-to travel bag all the time, even flying now. I'll get into a little bit more of the reasons why I love this bag so much, why it's become kind of my flight bag. It's been my like road trip truck car bag for a long time now. You've seen it in a lot of weekender landers because I just like the layout. I like how easy it is to access gear. I'm going to talk more about why it's just become my everything bag more at the end. Pick yourself up one of these. I do have a code with Vertex as well. Last line, one word will save you. I believe it's 15% now uh, off of everything. So that's the bag I pretty much am always traveling with. Sometimes I'll switch it around, which I'll get into in a little bit. So hydration, I drink a lot of water. I used to always carry around the 48 ounce Nalgene, but I switched over to the 32 ounce again. But I drink, I mean, I probably drink a gallon of water a day, honestly. Drink a lot of water, stay hydrated. So I use this, sometimes I'll mix some like, some microgreen type drinks in here. Sometimes I'll, I'll mix a hydration drink in here. Sometimes like a recovery drink after mountain biking or something. A lot of times I'll put a zip fizz right into here. I like, I like Nalgene's because I see how much I have. They're BPA free. You can boil water. They're basically indestructible. I dent the crap out of other kinds of uh, bottles and then the OTF lid is just seriously you guys have seen me talk about this not sponsored by Nalgene. Nalgene has never even sent me a bottle or a sticker or they don't even know who I am but Nalgene bottles oh they're so good with the OTF lid. The OTF lid I like it because it just makes drinking easy. Again I'm in the car a lot this little hole here makes it easy to drink when you're driving or whatever. So I, I fly with this as well. I'll dump the water out once I go through security and then fill it back up at a water fountain or whatever because I like I like having water with me. Paired with a Zip Fizz, if I'm going somewhere for a few days, I'm going to take a few of these instead of Red Bulls or whatever. It's a very healthy alternative. Not sponsored by Zip Fizz, but I wish I was because I drink these so much. It's just basically it's got some Caffeine from green tea extracts. This video is going to get too long if I keep doing this. So I'll try to, I'll try to trim down. But a bunch of vitamins and energy, and I like how it tastes. So I pop, pop that in there. This is like my go-to. Like you'll never see me without a Nalgene. I also will basically cold brew green tea the night before. Put a bag of green tea in here, and then the next day, that's kind of my first drink of the day of water. That's green tea. It's been brewing overnight. Uh, Nalgene's, freaking love them. Here's another little Nalgene trick. So I, I drink a lot and I snack a lot. I've been trying to be healthier on snacks. So I've been making my own 
trail mix basically so a mixture of my favorite nuts like almonds and whatever and then some dark chocolate nibs and then some dried blueberries usually I'll put in there and sometimes if I'm really wanting a little bit more sweetness I'll put like little peanut butter chips but what I found is that I made those in Ziploc bags for a while and what I, I like to like you know I like to drink bottle I'm on the move a lot whatever I've been making just s a serving or however much this is in one of these smaller Nalgene's this is a 14 ounce Nalgene and I dump the ingredients in there and can shake it around and then I can just drink the trail mix here and there <laughs> as I'm going through the day it's kind of weird but I really like doing it so this is kind of my combo when I'm traveling this will be filled with trail mix maybe I'll bring a little extra if I'm if I'm going somewhere for a while. I don't know why I started with Nalgene, but uh, I just, they're good. I like them. Um, I used to be an anti-Apple guy. I'm, I'm really, this is, I'm just going to embrace it. This is going to be a little bit of a rambling video. I used to be an anti-Apple guy. I used to be like hardcore Windows PC, Windows laptop. I still have a Windows PC. I like to game and stuff. Uh, Eventually, I just decided to go Apple because all my friends were Apple and iMessage and AirDrops. A lot of times I went to events like SHOT Show or whatever, and we're all exchanging photos and whatnot, and everyone's AirDropping everything. And when I had an Android, I was like, man, I can't AirDrop. What a loser. But So I got, I got into the Apple ecosystem, but it's very good. So I had a MacBook. I still have a MacBook, but when I travel, I've trimmed it down to I have my phone on me all the time. Right now I'm rocking this UAG case. This is a biodegradable case on the iPhone. And then I'm almost always have the iPod or the iPad. This is an iPad Pro 12.9 inch with the magic keyboard. You know, this little one that's kind of floaty. Very good to type on. Turns this into sort of a computer, not really, but for what I do, most of what I'm doing is now like social media stuff, replying to YouTube comments or posting on Instagram or whatever, but most of it is writing emails. So the you can do the split screen emails and web browser, so I'm usually using web browser or emails and a variety of apps and stuff. So I've kind of used this, it's nice, I don't have its own plan, so I tether it to my phone when I need to or I just bust it out on Wi-Fi, but this is kind of my email writing machine, but I also consume a lot of content. So I'll download YouTube videos or I'll download uh, movies or shows or whatever because I don't watch a whole lot of movies at home. Again, busy guy, but when I'm on an airplane, I almost always watch a movie. So iPad, really good battery life. The iPad Pro 12.9 inch, the new ones have a great screen. So I'll use it as a media consumption device, but also a work device. So rather than bringing a tablet and a laptop, I just bring this with the keyboard. It works really, really well. And again, has great uh, synergy with the Apple ecosystem. So I use that, and then I also use when I travel, especially noise canceling headphones. I, I traveled for a long time without using noise canceling headphones and finally embraced it and finally went all out and bought the Airpa AirPods Max, which are, they have really good noise canceling. And the thing that I like about them so well is they transition so seamlessly to taking a call on the cell phone, then back to watching a movie on the iPad or the MacBook and there's no other device that like seamlessly transit. You gotta, you know, disconnect Bluetooth, connect it over there, disconnect, connect it. When you're using Apple devices, and again, this is not like an, I'm not trying to preach Apple because overall I don't love Apple as a company, but their ecosystem just works really well. So the AirPods Max, this is in a, this is in a UAG case as well. They sent UAG, cool brand. I've been talking to them. They sent me some stuff. We may do some cool projects together or something. This is the other case you've probably seen. I'll link to these both down below. This is pretty good. It's a much lower quality, much less protective case, but tiny little bit smaller. I do like this case as well, but this is the UAG when you want full protection. Dope little kind of olive green color in here. So these, I put a little skin to protect them a little more. Uh, it's actually a same skin as I have on the Magic Keyboard. And so that's nice. So I travel with noise canceling AirPods Max. I really, really like those. Um, sweet. So that's kind of what I got going on there. And then I'll just get into some general stuff. So here's something. This is the pouch to end all pouches. This is, I should do an update on this. I, I made a video of the contents 
of this kit. This has everything you could ever want. So I should probably do an update video on this because I've changed a little tiny, almost nothing, but like swapped out a couple things in this pouch since my update, since my original video on this. I'll link to the original video. It's probably three or four, or maybe five years old by now because I spent a whole lot of time developing a pouch that contains everything you could ever want. And it's just, oops, it's just in one little thing. There's probably some stuff, like I don't use much of this stuff, but it's, it's one of those things where I'm just like, I want to have it just in case. It has scissors, a little bit of tools in here. It has some like towels, earplugs, some cordage, med supplies, like all, it's just, this pouch is so, 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 so good. So all of this stuff kind of transitions from either the Vertex contingency duffel into a lot of times I'll use the, the Vertex EDC Ready as kind of my smaller backpack. And then I got some Pelican cases over here, which we'll get into as well. So this stuff, basically, I just pulled it out. It was all in this Vertex contingency duffel, pulled it out, put it on the table so I could show you guys. But this kit, this is the core. This is the foundational piece. If I'm going to go, for, if, I, if I just needed to grab a different bag and I just could quickly grab one thing out of a bag, it would be this. And this can cover pretty much everything I need. So this little, it's in the little uh, VanQuest pouch here. It's like the, I forget, not the max what it, I'll, I'll tell you later but it has it has like duct tape roll in there and everything if you didn't want to do the case there's a few things in here that i would say buy uh, a variety pack of these little ziploc bags uh, in in different sizes i use these for all kinds of things so in here uh this is just some butterfly bandages i just grabbed this as a reminder Make a tiny little med kit of stuff that you think you'll realistically use. Butterfly closures are good. I've injured myself a lot mountain biking, doing other stuff, and butterflies are kind of the main thing I use. I don't really need a Band-Aid that much, but Band-Aid you could put in there, um, and then pills. So the two main pills I have are diphenhydramine, which is an antihistamine, basically Benadryl, those pink pills. Uh, that's because if somebody gets stung by a bee and they're allergic or someone has some allergic type of reaction, Benadryl is the main thing that's going to help them in the immediate term. So I, I, I have those for that primarily for kind of an emergency use, but also they're commonly a sleep aid as well. So when I'm traveling, sometimes I'll need to, I'll, I'll try to get to bed a little earlier or whatever and maybe I'll take a little Benadryl. The other is just ibuprofen. So those are the two main pills I keep in this little baggie. And that's kind of like a little, a tiny little lightweight medical kit that you can restock and you can kind of know uh, what's in there. And then I also, I Q-tip, I'm a Q-tipper. Q-tip every time after shower, love it. Love clean ears, feels good. Uh, and then dental flosser. And then in here also is just a little spool of just regular standard dental floss for flossing, but also that little, that little string, that little cordage is nice. It's just dental floss is basically like a micro cordage, ultra lightweight, a lot of uses for a little cord. And then, batteries so i have batteries in this kit but a lot of times when you're traveling when you're doing whatever uh, a remarkable amount of things use batteries so i'll carry <coughs> sorry little cough there so i carry batteries typically the lithiums the double a's or the the triple a's well both because um they're the most common batteries and the lithiums are really lightweight and they're really good. They do better in the cold and everything like that. Uh, to kind of tag on to uh, medical stuff, tourniquet, cat tourniquet. This is the main piece of medical gear that can save a life that is not as easy to improvise as some other stuff. A lot of people carry full medical kits, but this is, this is the main one that I'll carry pretty much in everything. I got them in my vehicles. I got them everywhere. Cat tourniquet, because this is the main piece of medical kit that can like legitimately, legitimately save your life. So cat. And then I have some trauma shears. These are the Leatherman Raptor trauma shears. These are the best trauma shears. They're kind of expensive, like 80 bucks, but you can fly with these. So you can fly with any trauma shears, um, any like standard trauma shears. There's scissor length has to be below a certain whatever. So these are the Leatherman trauma shears and I like them because they're, I mean, they're cool. Uh, but they got like a little, little measure down here. You can see they obviously fold up uh, into a more compact thing. They have a little pocket clip built into them. 
they have an oxygen tank wrench, they have a seat belt cutter, and they have a glass breaker all built into it. So this little guy goes with me. I, I'm kind of cheap. I should probably just buy like a few more of them, but I basically have one. I maybe I have two, but this one I basically transfer around and this, this goes with me pretty much everywhere. There is another little tool called the Gerber, I believe it's the Dime, yeah, the Gerber Dime Travel. So it's a little Gerber, like it's a little mini multi-tool, has pliers, scissors, couple screwdrivers, and stuff like that. It's called the Dime Travel. I, I don't travel with this as much anymore because almost always it holds me up at the security line. And I just don't care about it quite as much. The Gerber Dime, I found, held me up at the security line more often than the Leatherman Raptor shears. There's probably 15% of the time I go through, I'm TSA pre-check, probably 15% of the time they will ask to look at these and they pull them apart and they're like, what are these? And then some noob in TSA is like, you can't fly with these. And I'm like, yeah, you can go get, go get somebody that, that knows. And they come and they measure it or whatever and they let me go. So this is never, I've flown with this dozens of times. I've never had one confiscated. It's good to fly. They may try to confiscate it, tell them no, get someone that knows what they're talking about. Um, and this bag, almost, I mean, probably 3% of the time they open it up. And there's like scissors, there's all kind of, like, I don't know how this bag doesn't get flagged more, but it almost never does. That's why I, I used to have this in the bag. I don't have it anymore because this was the thing and I don't even travel with it anymore. But if you must have a little multi-tool, Gerber Dime Travel, is a TSA friendly, but they will almost always look through it. Um, so good little travel kit though there. Uh, and then a hard drive. I don't travel with this as much anymore. This is a little sand disc. I forget what it is, but it's like one of these little ruggedized mini um, hard drives. Most of what I do is fine on just like the, I don't, I don't shoot enough uh, 4K or anything. Like I'm not a heavy, heavy content guy. So I'm not usually needing to back stuff up onto hard drives. So this is kind of a relic of the past, but I just, I still, I, I just think it's cool. I, th I think it's cool tech. So I still travel with it every once in a while. In these, both of these bags, uh, my backpack and the contingency, I actually just left it in there. I have multiple writing devices, so pens, markers, whatever, but I just had this out as a reminder. It's always good to have something to just be able to jot down a note or whatever if tech goes bad or you just need to write down a, a phone number or an address or something really quick. It's always good to have quick access to a writing device. So Sharpie, Sharpies are good. I prefer the Sharpies with the dual tip, the kind of fine tip and like the ultra fine tip. Those are my jam. I usually bring gum. Want your breath to smell fresh just in case. I don't have any issues with bad breath or anything ever, but maybe I really wanted that bag of Funyuns at, when I was at the airport. And I'm like, okay, well now I should put some gum in. So I almost always have gum when I travel as well. I oftentimes travel with wet wipes too because you're traveling, things are grody, whatever. Sometimes you can't wash your hands, wet ones. These little guys are great. And then I almost always have a pair of gloves. Like I always keep gloves in my trucks and everything. There's a lot of stuff that you do that you just don't want to mess up your hands. Now I'm a, I'm a strong believer in like doing stuff without working out. I don't work out with gloves or anything like that. Get some calluses on your hands. It's good. But a lot of times I'll be chopping firewood or going over stuff like that. I wear gloves where either it's gonna get super, super dirty and then I'm gonna have to drive. I like to wear gloves like that so I'm not getting just dirt all over everything if I can't wash my hands. But anything that I can get a splinter from, I almost always wear gloves then because I just hate getting splinters. So uh, there's a lot of things, you know, when you're working on automotive stuff or just doing something gnarly where gloves are good and sometimes they just give you a little more grip, like moving furniture or something. So I take care of gloves, big fan of just mechanics. These aren't the fast fits, but I really like mechanics fast fits. And then these are dirt cheap, these Gorilla Glip grip gloves or generic ones of them or whatever. And they just give you a little more grip. They're not as protective as something like the mechanics, but they are just so light. It's like a couple of tissues basically. And gloves are good. I like light. So in my EDC, I always have a flashlight. This your cell phone has a flashlight as well. So I have a little bit of redundancy with flashlights built into my system, but it's hard to replace a headlamp. So this is a Petzl Zipka. 
I do have the little rechargeable thingy in here. This is something that I can also take the little rechargeable pack out and put triple A's in. So triple A's, I'll almost always travel with at least three triple A's because a lot of things take three triple A's. I think this takes three triple A's. So Petzl Zipka headlamp, basically the most compact headlamp you can have and it fits over a variety of stuff. You can even like use it on your wrist or something like that. So it's kind of my go-to travel uh, headlamp. It's one of my least favorite headlamps to use actually. So when I'm actually using a headlamp, I won't use this because the zip just isn't as good as like a real headlamp band. But you can't beat how compact it is. And in an emergency or just when a headlight would really come in handy, I like having the Petzl Zipka. This is a funny little thing, but I'm just gonna show it because it doesn't work on every airplane anymore. But this is a little thing that holds my iPad or it can hold a cell phone. It has this little strap that clips over the top. This hooks over basically the tray and it brings your tablet up to where you can watch it without your tray down. Now, the, the flight attendants are pretty much Nazis on takeoff or landing in like 30 minutes before landing. Put your, put your thingies up. This, the, I've never been yelled at, so I just pop this little guy in. I'll link to it down below. It's kind of hard to describe, but it holds a tablet and it does really well. It doesn't work on like, I've flown some cheaper airlines, just like crappy airplanes that like have the little micro, little micro fold down. Uh, thing it doesn't work with that, but this is just a good way to watch movies when you travel Super lightweight. So this is more of my flying thing, but I usually will just keep it in my duffel all the time. Otherwise, I'll forget it Okay So charging stuff now so I don't always bring a battery pack because they're kind of heavy battery packs are not lightweight But sometimes I do travel if I know I'm gonna be at a place that I'm not gonna be near power for a while if I'm going on like a, a off-grid video shoot or something like that, then sometimes I'll bring uh, battery power. And this one has a little wireless charger built in and it has USB-C PD, which is crucial for battery packs. So I'll link this one down below, but this is probably my favorite of uh, my battery packs right now that I bring with me. Don't always bring it with me. Now wall chargers, I have two that I like a lot. And these are kind of just like random off brands, but I researched a lot to find these ones. This one, it's a little bigger. I'll link to it down below. It has two USB PDs. One of them is a 45 watt USB PD, which is enough to power my MacBook Air that I'll travel with sometimes, and definitely enough to, tra to power my uh, iPad Pro. And it also has a regular USB port. So this is kind of like when I'm traveling with all of my tech, I'll bring this. If you have like a MacBook Pro that needs 100 watts, this isn't gonna cut it. Uh, but I like how small and compact it is. Now what I really like is this tiny little one. Uh, these both have kind of the fold out uh, US outlet prongs. And this one has a single USB PD that's only 20 watt and a regular USB. That is enough to handle my iPad and phone and charge up my headphones or whatever else that I need. So this is really this tiny little one, super compact, super lightweight, it's what I usually travel with. So then you need some cables. I have a really cool triple wireless charger that charges my Apple Watch. I use this Apple Watch. I actually have this UAG case on it. Uh, very nice. That's a new That's a new addition. It's probably my favorite little piece of UAG stuff that uh, I had sent out because I bang up my Apple Watch quite a bit. I didn't talk about the Apple Watch in the ecosystem, but it's great. Set reminders, send texts, whatever. Just check schedules, weather, love <laughs> Love the Apple Watch. Uh, having said that, here's a little multi-cable basically. So this one has two lightning adapters and an Apple Watch charger. Um, this one, I've tried a lot of these. This is the one that the Apple Watch charger works the best on. A lot of them suck. So I'll link this one down below so you can not have a bunch of fails, but I have a wireless charger that basically has two wireless chargers. So I'll bring that if Ashley and I are gonna be traveling and staying in a hotel so we can both charge our phones on there and I can charge my watch or whatever. But multi-cables are nice because you don't have to bring a bunch of individual cables. Also, USB-C. I wish everything moved to USB-C, but it hasn't, but you do need USB-C for the iPad, obviously. And I do keep one of these little cigarette lighter USB chargers in case I'm renting a car or something and it doesn't have USB ports. 
I still want to be able to charge my phone. So I'll bring a very small micro one of those pretty much with me everywhere I travel. I always wear sunglasses uh, and I always wear basically safety rated sunglasses. So either Oakley's uh, or Magpul's I've been wearing a lot more recently. These are the Magpul Explorers. They fit my face really, really well. The lenses are a little too big for some macho men out there that think I'm wearing women's glasses or whatever, but uh, bigger bigger glasses provide more protection. They provide more more visibility. There's, there's a lot of functional reasons for it. You don't have the borders cutting off some of your field of view and everything. So I like the bigger, I like the bigger lenses, honestly. Uh, and again, impact rated because you gotta protect your eyes. So these are great because I can wear them at the range, I can wear them driving, whatever. So I try to wear sunglasses a lot to protect myself from the UV rays, the killer UV rays, but also just impact stuff. So I'll always have a pair of sunglasses with me and I just, I wear them all the time. I got LASIK actually, and ever since LASIK, technically I got PRK, but my eyes have been more sensitive to light. So I actually just wear sunglasses a lot. The last thing that I'm gonna talk about on the table here is just cashola. So we live in the, the age of, uh, you know, Apple Pay, wireless pay, like even, I, I remember I was showing a wallet, I used a little Travex, I was sh showing a wallet in my EDC and someone was like, you carry a wallet with credit cards? Like who are you? And I'm just like, what is that? Like credit cards aren't a thing anymore? And maybe if you live in a big city, credit cards are, I live in, a I live in the mountains, I can't even use Apple Pay at a lot of places, I actually physically have to use a credit card. So. Uh, the gas stations, the most of the gas station I use, I have to use a credit or cash, but I have to use a credit card. I can't pay with Apple Pay. So like when someone was like, man, you still carry credit cards? And they're like totally serious about it. I was just like, are there some people that actually don't even carry credit cards at all now? That's crazy. Crazy to me. I, I'm not a, I'm not like a city boy guy, so I don't know. I'm guessing if you just totally live in the city, you don't even need a credit card anymore. But when you travel, there's a chance that you'll actually physically need cash money. For people that don't know what cash money is, it's this paper currency uh, that, that, that you can fold and even coins, coin, metal coins, crazy. So some vending machines and things like that, parking meters, whatever. I carry cash, emergency cash, because I really very, very rarely use cash, but sometimes I'll need cash. And sometimes, you know, tip a valet or something like that, like cash is good to have. So I'll basically, again, these little Ziploc bags I told you to get earlier in various sizes. This is the one I use for cash just to keep it organized, to keep it, you know, it doesn't get, it's kind of waterproof in a sense. And I'll usually carry a variety of bills, some smaller bills for little things and then some bigger bills more for emergency use and then some quarters or something in here as well. So that's that. All right, let me show you some stuff now. So you'll almost always see me with an orange Pelican case. I've talked about this in some videos in the past, but I like the orange Pelican air cases because they're, you're less, less likely to forget about them. You're less likely to leave them somewhere. They'll stand out very easy. I'll take my camera gear, like all my camera gear maybe, and set it on the ground somewhere. This is very easy to see, it's bright orange. So that's the main reason, just because I don't want to leave it behind. Maybe I'm out overlanding or whatever and I kind of move this gear and set it on the side or use it as a step. Oftentimes I'll use these as a step because obviously pelicans are the gold standard in kind of robustness and everything like that. So a, a lot of times you'll see this case, this is the Pelican Air 1507. This has no wheels, it fits my camera gear perfectly inside. I have a whole video dedicated to camera gear, I'll link it up here. Pelican case, pretty non-standard. The new Air, I like the new Air latches. So Pelican cases, there's not much to talk about, really. They're just bomb-proof, made in America, awesome cases. In this fits my little cheapy newer camera bag and all of my camera gear. Again, I've made a whole video on this. You can check that out. Uh, I talk about everything. But what I like about this is this case fits this bag nearly perfectly. And then when I need to, this is a backpack. I can pull it out, toss it on my bag, or on my back, go for a hike, whatever, and it's great. When it's in here, it acts as an organizer, separator, protector, it's padded. So this is just the ultimate camera 
setup. There's nothing, nothing on the market that touches it uh, unless you just want to carry a backpack only. But this is also a backpack. But I like this because uh, if I'm traveling or whatever, I can just throw this in the bed of my truck and not worry about it bouncing around or stuff falling on it or whatever because it's inside of this bomb-proof case. Now, the 1507, my main one, little briefcase case. Occasionally, though, when I travel travel, this is the main Pelican travel like carry-on size case you're gonna see this one here this is the 1535 chose it in orange again second reason in orange especially when I'm flying is this is way less likely that someone's gonna steal try to walk out of the airport with a bright orange pelican case you don't see a lot of the orange ones they're pretty unique like a black pelican case, kind of nondescript. Someone could probably sneak away with it. They pick it up real quick, run out, and they're just kind of lost because it's black. This, you pick it out from the crowd very easy. A very ballsy crook is going to steal an orange pelican air case. So I just like orange. Plus, I'm just a big fan of orange, but a ton of reasons why orange is the ticket. So this pelican air... Uh, 1535 obviously has rollers, little handle that pulls out, fits in carry-on size. Luggage and that backpack that holds all my camera gear fits right into here, but then I gain a little bit more storage for other stuff. So sometimes I'll carry this when I travel, kind of my go-to when I want just like a proper carry-on size hard, hard-sided case. But usually I don't. I, I opt for the duffel more often because I'll explain it here in a little bit. And then bags before, I really love the Vertex Gamut, but now that I'm not living out of my backpack like I used to, the EDC Ready is kind of my jam. Has a lot of uh, features from the Gamut. Interior water bottle pockets on both sides that I use for either a water bottle, but also just to kind of a quick dump pouch for stuff. Does have your waist strap if you need to hook up and actually run. Sternum strap as well if you need a little more support. Great, 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 great backpack. Vertex just makes good stuff and yeah. So this is the main bag. Before I kind of zoom in, I don't know, I think I'm going to zoom in. Maybe I won't. This is a duffel bag and let me show you. It comes with two straps so you can backpack strap mode it. And I've experimented with a lot of stuff. There's basically a place here to hook the strap and a place here, and a place here, and a place here. The straps have little uh, hooks. They're easily removable. I use a single strap. I single strap this baby. And the reason I do it, I do it on this side. This is the side that opens on the duffel, and this is the top zipper compartment here. So this side, I put it on, and the reason is it's gonna be a little weird. The reason is I can, if I'm just, waiting for the boarding to get called and my bag sitting at my feet or whatever I can just fling it on single shoulder very easy and then it tucks in behind me so I'm walking down the aisles of the plane or whatever it's just it's not sticking out or anything like this it's right behind me so this strap works the best if I'm taking a longer trip I'll try not to mess up my mic here too much the single strap goes over the shoulder like this and then I have a very secure carry I can run like this or I can do whatever and again it's very in line with my body it's not hanging off the side weird I almost always carry the duffel on my shoulder I pretty much never carry the duffel this way I almost never carry a duffel this way it's just clunky and big now you're taking up two persons width it's not really what i like to do and that's why i like this duffel it's one of the many reasons i like this duffel so much because the shoulder strap really turns it into carrying on the on the back very nicely the other thing i like little grab handle here little grab handle here you can move it around fling it around pick it up carry it you could even in a pinch grab this throw it over your bag run whatever you need to do so it's just the Carrying it, very good, very easy. Oh, oh, just, just a great thing about the bag. Obviously YKK zippers all around, super high quality bag, uh, heavy duty, 
everywhere. Mine is covered with dog hair on the bottom. This is a limited run. I don't think they have it in multicam black anymore. They have like kind of a heather bluish and a heather black grayish. So size is perfect. Again, fits perfectly into overhead containers. This I can live out of for a week, easy. Just a lot of space. And a duffel just has good space. Like a backpack is great for carrying, but no backpack, unless you get some really weird, wonky, awkward backpack, has the space that a duffel bag has. And a duffel bag is just easy to work out of. So this strap here on this side just folds down out of the way here, and then you can open up the bag. What I like, the other thing I like about it, this duffel is it's got a little bit of rigidity. So there's nothing even in here. It's pretty much empty, but you can see it maintains its shape. So this makes it very easy to load stuff in, keep stuff organized and whatever. A Little bit of rigidity, but not completely because it can, you know, you can crush it down if you need to, but holds its shape. So it's like kind of a box, kind of a suitcase, but still soft, comfy enough, can shove it under your seat. Everything I talked about earlier. But you have wide open and it's just, it's a duffel. Duffels are popular for a reason. Sometimes I have this in here. This is a little portable backpack. There's like a billion different random Zomake, joy of life. That is a good China product right there. Now these are like 20 bucks. What this is, is a backpack that basically folds into itself, super lightweight, it doesn't take what, uh, up much room. You may have seen, I like these in my car kits and stuff like that. This just turns into a backpack. So sometimes if I'm going somewhere and I know like I'm with Ashley or whatever and she's gonna wanna buy a bunch of stuff or some souvenirs or whatever, I'm like, okay, well I'm just gonna bring this bag. But if I need to overflow into basically a, a, set, a personal item when I'm flying or whatever, then I can unzip this and then I have a whole backpack and it takes up no space, but I didn't like bring a whole extra backpack. So this is just kind of in a pinch. I can use it or just to whatever, carry extra gear. So that's in, that's in here. So the bag, let's, let's talk about the exterior first. So again, when it's on my sh shoulder, this side is up. There's a one pocket on this side, no pocket on this side. So I keep that pocket up because I, I'm more aware of it. People aren't gonna steal anything out of it or whatever. And so this opens up. So this is the pocket. When I'm going through security and I need to take my phone and everything out, I'll dump it into this pocket. So this is kind of, I usually leave this pocket empty. It doesn't have much stuff in it. A lot of this bag does have basically the soft side, the loop side of Velcro. So you can stick more pouches, you can stick whatever onto this. I don't actually utilize that surprisingly. But if you wanna stick this, the Velcro stuff on here, you can. But otherwise, it's just a nice soft texture. This has a couple of features on this end pouch that I don't actually use, honestly. It has this Velcro opening here that goes into the main compartment of the bag. If you need to get access to that or have something overflow into this area for one reason or another. And also has a full length thing right here. Now I do use this occasionally. Uh, this will fit like a foldy boy a foldy boy, a folding AR or equivalent down here. And it's kind of basically a hidden compartment. This is the only way to access it through the end. So you can kind of rip this off, pull it out quickly if you need to, but also kind of keep it out of casual eyes. I don't use that all the time, but it's there if you need it. Another cool feature of the bag that I don't use almost ever is it can kind of fold down here into like a somewhat padded like gun mat workspace wall. This compartment keeps all of your contents inside. It's a cool feature. I never use it, but it's there if you wanna use it. Maybe you could use it like as a baby changing mat. Maybe you're using it on the beach and you want to lay out some electronics here and work on it, build build a camera kit, use it. You know, there's a variety of things you can use with it and it's cool that it's built in. I almost kind of forget it's there. Maybe like if I, if I reminded myself, I would use it more often, but it's there. It has these little buttons on the corner that kind of button it into place if you never use it. Uh, and it'll never zip down that far. That's what I'll usually do. These buttons right here, I'll button them up. Now that little guy that kept all of the contents in is, there's a nice thing about it. It's a separator from the main compartment. So it's kind of, this whole bag is kind of padded. So you can kind of use this to separate your laptop 
or your thing, your tablet from the rest of your stuff if you want to. Now, on the front here, before we get in, more loop Velcro and a little card slot here. So I have a little card with my info. It's basically like a bag tag in here all the time. So if I lose the bag or something, some good citizen could get it back to me. So then you have kind of a front admin pouch here. I have this mostly unloaded, but here again, some writing utensils, pens, pencils, Sharpies. Do have a little, uh, a little pen for the iPad. I have a little notebook for taking physical notes. Uh, there's some zipper pockets, some other pockets in here. So a nice little separation pocket in the front. Pretty slim, so you're not gonna wanna put a bunch of thick stuff in there. Now the main pockets I use for organization are here. We got kind of an expandable pocket, zipper pocket here and here, kind of identical pockets. That's where I put a lot of my hygiene products and stuff like that. And then one more pocket up here in the front. So you have good interior organization in your main compartment here. Zippers, kind of the see-through type mesh there. And you can just fit a bunch of stuff. When Ashley and I are going camping for a couple days, we'll usually share this bag. She'll load her stuff and I'll load, her, I'll, I'll load my stuff into here and we'll both live out of this one bag. Light colored interiors are always good on bags so you can see what's down there. When there's a black interior, you kind of tend to lose stuff down in there and can't see it as well. Uh, all the zippers are great. That's pretty much the features of this, this duffel, the contingency duffel. You hear me talk about it a lot and you may think to yourself like, oh yeah, I don't, I can't can't get that excited over a duffel. But hopefully I've showed you some of the features that just make it so, so good. Uh, again, it's, it's stuff you just don't really think about probably in a duffel, but just having these handles here, when I'm grabbing it, when I'm pulling it out of the overhead bin, I can just like carry it like this real quick until I get it where I need to, toss it over the shoulder, everything just works very easy. I can use it kind of like a backpack here. Sorry, I realize I'm hitting this mic now, so hopefully this stuff isn't too gnarly. But man, cannot tell you enough how much this single bag has grown on me. It is just as far as bags go, it's my favorite. My favorite bag. Uh, hopefully that should be pretty obvious since you see me use it all the time, but yeah. Yeah. Whew, this video is longer than I thought it would be considering I'm sick and dying. I should really go to bed and rest so I can try and maybe get better by Overland Expo. So we'll see. Whew, but it was good. Hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of, I, I, I love talking gear. I love talking gear, so. That's why on the banner of my YouTube page, it says gear and good times. Gear is the first thing because I really do love, I love good gear and there's a lot of not good gear and then there's some good pieces of gear. So again, code last line, L-A-S-T-L-I-N-E, one word will save you 15% off of everything at vertex.com. And they, they just make a lot of good stuff. I, I've mentioned it in another video before. I, wor I work with, they, they sent me this stuff. I've kind of been working more closely with them on uh, refining some design aspects of various things. I'm beta testing some products with them. I'm being a wear tester for, for some other stuff. And I'll probably develop my own products with them as well just because I love the company. So cool stuff. Yeah, I'm out of it, guys. I am out of it. Oh, I have this ring. So I've been wearing these like silicone rings most of the time but I got a couple kind of like nicer rings that are cheap Amazon rings. I'll link them down below if you're looking for, for cool looking rings because I, I like things that look cool. I mentioned it earlier, but this little UAG protective case, olive and orange, so sick. Okay, so house, homestead build update coming soon. I'll probably post a post on Instagram and I'll probably post a post on YouTube asking for questions. I wanna do like a QA a Q and A video to kind of kick off the homestead build because it's going to be a series of videos that I'm going to be doing for the next maybe ever as I kind of build and live on this homestead. It'll not become a main part of the channel by any means. You'll keep seeing the stuff that you know and love here. It'll just be kind of a new aspect. Uh, as a prepper, as a guy who strongly believes in preparedness, I think developing a homestead is the epitome. Is is the the 
is the epitome of preparedness. So that's what I've been working towards for a long time, finally almost to the point where I can start building it. So super stoked on it. Yeah, awesome, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the support. Love ya. Until next time, take care.